Hey everybody, I am back for the second part of this form tutorial. This is going to be the PHP side. We're going to make this form dynamic, give it some functionality, basically make it work. So the last screencast we left off with uh, this form that we created. It was a really basic form. Um, and this is what it looks like here. So next we are going to actually give it some functionality. So we need to create a PHP form or PHP file that this form can contact and make everything happen. So here in the form we actually gave it an action of contact PHP dot PHP. So what we need to do is create a new file with that name. So we'll go here into the form and I'll create a new file called contact.php and we're going to open it up. <clears throat> now PHP file is basically just an HTML file but it does um, allow for scripting. <clears throat> so we don't need any of this information in here so we'll just delete it and we're going to start by opening up our PHP. So we're going to do an opening PHP tag and a closing PHP tag. And we're just going to delve right into it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to give uh, an if statement that everything is going to be bundled into. So it's basically saying if this is true then do everything that's within this this function. So if is set meaning if the post is set for the email then we're gonna do something so we're going to give it the global variable of post which is um, if we look on the original form we will see that that's the method we're using so let me go ahead and show you here we're using a method of post because we're actually just sending information we're not going to get any information from anything so uh, we're just going to use the method of post <coughs> excuse me so we uh, close off all of our um, parentheses and we're going to open up these brackets and everything that is going to happen is going to happen in between these two brackets here so we're going to do a little commenting right now commenting is a good way to keep track of what your code does where it's at and everything so in PHP you just do two forward slashes and that creates a comment so um, here is the email to information so what we're going to do is we're going to do another global variable here of email underscore two and that is going to be whatever your email address so your email address goes here um, and we will end that statement with a semicolon in PHP a semicolon you can think of that as a period in a regular sentence that's just the end of your statement so we're gonna need a subject line so email subject is going to be uh, let's see this is from your website contact form okay that's the subject line and let's see who's the email from well the email is going to be from your website uh, so let's just put that in there so from J design in motion which is my website obviously and end that all right, so next step we're going to go through is we're going to do some error code. So error code. We're going to create a function, died function, and that's going to have a variable of error in it. And then everything that happens in the function happens in between here. So if we get an error, it's going to echo out this message. We are sorry but there seems let's see but there were error errors found with the form you submitted okay so <clears throat> let's see let's echo another statement out right after that 
these errors appear below and let's give them a little room so we'll put a break in there now the way PHP works is like I said it's each it's basically HTML so since it's in between these two brackets you can put HTML in there and it will understand that those are breaks okay so we want it to echo out the errors okay so we need to echo out the errors Oops. and we do that with this with this um, variable and then we're going to give it a period this is con called concatenating it's basically like adding so uh, we're going to put uh, a couple breaks here and that's gonna be breaks uh, so that the next message we give there's some good space and padding between that so the error message plus these line breaks and then we'll echo out one more message. Please go back and fix these errors. And we'll give it one more break. And that is our error messages. And then what we want to do is we want to put this little function in here, die. This basically says stop everything. Exit the script until they go back and do it, fix it. So let's go ahead and put some validation in here so validation okay, now validation is basically to make sure that people are putting the right information into the, f the form fields so first off we want to validate that there's actually even information in these fields so we're gonna put an if statement if not so in in PHP this little symbol means not so if it is not set, and what if what is not set? Well, if this post for the name is not set, then we're going to do something. But we, instead of writing an if statement for each one of these, we're going to put these little marks in here. This basically says and. So if if the name, if there's no information in the name and there's no information in let's see the oops email field and I'm just gonna copy that and if there's no information in the comments okay so if none of these have any information in them <coughs> then we are going to do what's ever in these brackets and that's basically it's gonna be died so we we are sorry but there appears to be a problem with the form you submitted okay so what's that what that's saying is there's no information in there so there's a problem so we're gonna stop everything and we're gonna post this little error message and that's that's what you get alright next let's create some some variables so that we don't have to keep writing this information over and over let's go ahead and create some variables for these so let's do the first variable we'll call it name and that name is going to be equal to oops to name and I can actually just copy that paste it twice and we're going to change this one to email and this one to email comments and comments okay so let's go ahead and give some expected strings basically what what the, we're going to do next is we're expecting a certain type of information to go into each field so we're going to this is a way for us to say this is a valid email address or is a valid name that way somebody's not putting in some you know one two three four eight nine ten is my name you know this this gives it a little bit of consistency and a little bit of do it the right way does that make sense if you just answered me I'm well pleased okay let's create a variable for the error message 
This is the message that's going to be posted if they don't fill out the form correctly. But what we want to do is we want to give it basically a null value. We don't we want it to say nothing because this error message is going to be different depending on what takes place. So we give it a null value. There's basically no value in it at this point because it's going to have an array of different values. And those will come along here soon. So let's create another variable here, email expected. This is this is the information that we expect to be in the email field. Okay. So I'm going to do an open and closed single quotes. And in there we're going to put this little uh, forward slash and we're going to put a caret. Now a caret is basically letting us know that there's a mathematical function about to take place. Basically what it's doing is it's taking all the variables that we're about to put in and it's, and it's giving all the options. So we're going to go ahead and open a bracket and these are the things it's going to look for. It's going to look for A through Z in capital letters and A through Z in lowercase letters and 0 through 9. We're going to look for a period, underscore, percent, and a hyphen. Okay, so when you've put in the first part of your email, such as this, Jaffe at so and so. So this is what you know. This is what your typical email address. So let's say Jaffe one two three four at J Design in Motion dot net. Okay, so this is what a typical email address would look like. So this first part here is covering this part here. What we're allowing is anything, so if I wanted to capitalize, you know, if I capitalize that, then it's okay because it knows to look for capital letters, lowercase, and 0 through 9, plus these other numbers. So now we add an at sign because there's always going to be an at sign in an email address. And we're going to give, again, A through Z, A through Z, and 0 through 9. And a period and a hyphen. Now that gives us this information right here. So it's looking for this right now. And we'll close off that bracket. Okay. And then we're going to add a period because there's always a period. Now we need the period to be uh, behind this little slash. That way it's not thinking that we're concatenating. This slash basically strips it. So it, it's, it's removing the scripting in there. So it's just seeing that as an actual period. And that would be that period right there. And then we want to uh, add A through Z, capital, and then A through Z, lowercase. Um, and that's it, because you're not going to really find numbers in a dot, dot net, dot com, anything like that, dot org. And then we're going to look for a minimum, maximum amount of matches. Just put two, four, this is fine. And then we are using the dollar sign to end this string. And we're going to use that forward slash to put an end to it all. And that is, is basically what this variable now is. Email expected is going to be all that information. Okay. So now we need to create an if statement. If, and we're going to use the not again, preg match. Basically what this is saying, if it does not match these two fields if the email expected and the variable we created of email so if this information doesn't match into this variable then we are going to create an error message and that error message here we'll, we're going to pull that variable up which we created up here error message we gave it a null value well here we're actually going to give it we're going to put that period in there and we're going to give it its own value and that value is going to be the email address you entered does not appear to be valid what this is saying is this error message can be anything we want it to be and in this instance this is what it's going to be and we can can these so that we can add numerous error messages if they are uh, not filling out the form correctly.